What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv Video Audio Stuff and today I've got some truly fascinating content for you. A little while ago I met up with a photographer local to me called Guy Bellingham to help with a little bit of video consulting. In exchange he said come along to my studio and I'll do a tin type portrait for you. I gladly accepted and I thought I'd take you guys along with me to show you this amazing process. Guy actually recently won Self-Portrait Photographer of the Year for 2021 using these techniques and he's also a real vintage lens buff. There was a lot of interesting things to cram into this video so I really struggled to keep it short so it just ended up being a longer video. So grab yourself a coffee and enjoy. Let's go. So here we are viewers, this is Guy Bellingham of Guy Bellingham Photography and we're here in his pretty amazing studio mm. about to do some tin type. For a digital guy like myself, I've never done analog anything. <laughs> what, what, how would you say, like what is tin type for someone like me? Because <laughs> it's, to be fair, I mean it's, it's quite a, a nerdy thing isn't it? Which I appreciate, I mean that as a, as a, as a compliment. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's a it's a process from the 1850s. It's like it's one of the earliest kinds of photography, and ev everything is analog, um, from uh, sensitizing the plates and pouring the emulsion, uh, developing, and everything is done in camera and by hand. So it's quite it's it's the antithesis of digital photography in in, in every way, but mm -hmm. the results are, are really quite unique. And have these qualities that you just can't get with digital, so it's a it's a fascinating and somewhat mercurial process. I can, I can attest to that. Yeah, they're, they're certainly uh, unique. Maybe I can flash them on screen if, if a few different things. Should we maybe look at some lenses? Because I know that you're uh, definitely a lens buff. <laughs> yes, yeah. it's fair to say. Sure. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, this one I've currently got mounted on is a Petzval lens and um, Joseph Petzval, I think the early, in the early 1840s, invented this kind of lens and it was a huge leap forward at the time. Previous to that, lenses were very slow, but, but um, Petzval's design, which is a single acromat and a, an airspace doublet at the back, allowed you to get a lot more speed. So in those really early photos, people had to stay still for minutes to get, to, you know, to get the image because the emulsion, the photographic sensitive plate was so slow. But these, these, these mean that people would have to sit for seconds rather than minutes at a time. It's, it's um, hard to kind of get a grasp of the, the sheer size of this thing. It, it, it is it, my hand. <laughs> it, it's massive. It's absolutely massive. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, obviously these lenses are made from brass and what you have here is a, a a rack and pinion system. So this is used for fine focusing. So this this lens itself has been uh, it doesn't have any engravings on like many lenses from this time do. But the the rear element of glass in here, if you take it out, it's actually signed Wallet and Hamagus, which date um, Wallet and Hamagus worked together in 1850. So we can date this this lens to 171 years ago. <laughs> um, so you know you can imagine all the people that have been shot. With this over generations, so there's quite a lot of history imbued in this. And what and what about in terms of um, you know focal length and aperture? Sure, yeah. What sort of what are we talking on this? So uh, the this is a 450 mil f 4.5 lens. Okay. Um, but 450 mil on 8 by 10 camera, which is what this is currently mounted on, it's equivalent to about 70 mil in terms of wow. its field of view. So this is really a portrait lens so in this format. So how, how does that work with the aperture then? Because that's a, that's a pretty drastic uh, crop factor, isn't it? That's, yeah, I mean it's... it's if, it's, if that's possible to work out, I mean... Yeah, yeah. it's a... Uh, so yeah, I mean the lens itself, it projects a, a cone of light to the back and yeah, it produces a, an image circle. And then as you move the lens forwards, um, you focus, it focuses in closer and you get a smaller view of that on the ground glass on the back. Mm -hmm. So at the moment I've got a 4x5 back on here. So this is where the image is shown. Um, we'll, do, we'll do a little, uh, little snippet of this once, 
once we're actually shooting the portrait shoots. Yeah. And then he used these knobs again to fine tune the focus. Um, so I've got, yeah, I've got this, this 450, which is my main portrait lens. And then I've also got another Pets fan. And this one's slightly faster and wider. This one's from about 1907. Um, and this is 360mm f3, so it's really fast. Wow. And it's a huge piece of glass. Wow. <laughs> and, you That's know, incredible. <laughs> these lenses are, are really heavy. They're almost too heavy for this camera. I mean, in the old days, they used, use, you know, big wooden things. Um, but on this camera, these, these lenses are too heavy, so this one's I've actually mounted it in telescope tube rings. You know, these are uh, these mounts are usually used for astronomical telescopes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I use a jack underneath the front lens just to give it a bit of support. Uh, yeah. So uh, an another amazing thing about this kind of process, or well, using these kinds of cameras, I should say, is that you've got swing, tilt, and shift, both front and rear with these uh, oh. cameras. So you can really adjust uh, the plane of focus and and compose your image. It's it's great. So this lens can swing and then using this jack I can raise and lower it. So for portraiture work you can really um, hone in that, that super shallow depth of field mm. that you get and make the most of it. <clears throat> and um, when, we, when we met before, you mentioned um, is it a, a, the field curvature of these yeah. lenses, yeah. which is quite interesting. It's not something you see on uh, modern lenses at all. That's right. Not really, anyway. But um, how, how does that work? I mean, <laughs> so <laughs> maybe maybe I can put a, like a, a graphic on screen, maybe or something. <laughs> <laughs> so with these with these early lenses, uh, the rather than projecting an image flat on the back. Before they, they learned how to correct that, the plane of focus is actually curved. It's almost like a bowl shape. Hmm. So only the very centre is sharp, um, or the yeah, the, the the sharp the field of sharpness curves. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so you have to be really wary of that whilst when you when you're shooting, and make the most of that um, the centre of the image mm -hmm. and place that. Well, usually on the person's eyes if you're shooting portraiture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Um, uh, I think another worth, thing worth saying is, um, I'm sure many people will know that as you increase the size of your sensor, you can, it enables you to get a shallower depth of field. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, the usually I do shoot this on 8x10. So usually in a digital camera, your sensor's so big. Yeah. This is like that. It's huge. It's huge. <laughs> so a four point, I had a four point five lens on here, will give you an effective depth of field of about f zero point four, f zero point five. That's incredible. So, so the, uh, I think the depth of field with one of, with this lens is about seven millimeters at portrait distance. Okay. Yeah. So would you ever stop down? You can. Yeah, you can. You can stop down. Um, because I mean that that uh, I imagine sometimes must be quite difficult to, to work with. <laughs> yeah, well, they're, they're sort of. I, I do really like the shallow depth of field uh, yeah. because this because with the tin type process the emulsions are so sh slow. You really it's a huge advantage to keep the speed up. Right. Okay. But I'll I'll show you what what really helps in, in nailing the focus, and that's mm -hmm. this. So this is a a posing stand. It's a homemade one. Uh, <laughs> But they do something very similar in the Victorian times. Okay. So what this does is it just rests against the back of the person's oh, head. Oh yeah. So okay. that they don't move forward or backwards. Mm. So once you once you've focused with the camera, you get them to stay just resting against this, and it stops that you know it stops it going out. So that allows you to capture those those portraits with such a thin depth of field. Wow. Yeah. That's a that's a great idea. Yeah. Brilliant. What is this? <laughs> what is this? Uh, this is what's known as a cook uh, cook knuckler. See, uh, as the video guys will be familiar with Cook as a company. Yeah, because they, they make, make lots. They still of... make great cinematic lenses, yes. right? Yeah. 
Well, the, the company has been going for years and years, and this is a lens from about 1924. Wow. And it's a an 8x10 portrait lens. So a lot of the, like, uh, portraits of Hollywood stars in the 30s and 40s would have been taken with one of these. Mm. And it's called a knuckler because it has these knuckle dust style S- handles on its side. Does. And what, the, what these do is they actually, as you rotate this, it moves the, the center elements backwards and forwards. And that, what that does, it increases the um, spherical aberration. So you can see it here, it says sharp, and then you've got a scale for soft focus. Mm. So wow. what, that, what that actually does, it's almost like a kind of in-camera Photoshop. <laughs> yeah. Because it allows you to smooth out the skin um, on your subjects. Like in camera, so it's it's already there on the on the plate or on the film. Um, I mean that's incredible. Uh, they thought about that in, in the in the nineteen twenties. Yeah, really. The engineering is is, is phenomenal. But this yeah. thing this thing weighs four and a half kilos. <laughs> <laughs> and here's me. I was whinging that I just bought a uh, a Sigma one thirty five uh, that weighs <laughs> you know one point one. I was I was complaining yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I've used this for some wet plate, but I also use this uh, on another camera um, as well. But um, very hard to get hold of these. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> Next guy showed me his mini darkroom that he's got in his hallway cupboard. So yeah, this is where all the magic happens. Um, so for tin types, what, what we, uh, we we use a piece of uh, well, using a piece of aluminium today that's uh, covered in black enamel paint. And what we'll do in a minute is we'll take this protective layer off, uh, which gives us a totally clean surface. And then onto that we pour collodion. And this is a mixture of gun cotton, alcohol, ether, and some salts. And once we've poured that on the plate, it kind of, the alcohol and ether evaporate off. So it kind of forms a skin on top. So the aim is, is to get a really even layer onto the plate. Mm-hmm. And then just at the right moments, we're going to put it into here. And this is a bath of silver nitrate, which is a pretty nasty chemical. So once the plate goes in there, it will then be light sensitive. It'll it sits in there for three minutes and then it'll come out and we'll wipe the excess silver nitrate off the back of it. Mm-hmm. And then it goes into a plate holder. And this is what eventually goes in the back of the camera. So basically, this is just a light type box with a sliding window at the front. So you pop your plate light sensitive side down in here mm-hmm. and then this will go into the camera. The dark slide will be removed to expose the light Open sensitive the shutter, surface. shutter, really, yeah. Uh, but we use, actually use the lens cap on the camera as a shutter. Ah, I see. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So. Um, so yeah, that's how that works. With the wet plate primed, we went and took the photo. Obviously, he had pre-focused before preparing the plate, and you can see my head is resting on his headrest. What you can't see here is he has a rather large flash set up with a big octagonal softbox, which, as you can see, gives off an atomic flash. This type of photography still needs lots of light. And then, of course, it was back into the darkroom. Once the plate has been exposed, it's, it's brought back into the darkroom in this box, and we then pour a little shot of dev onto it. Dev development is, fluid. Yeah, so this is uh, acetic acid and water and ferrous sulfate and a bit of potassium nitrate. Sounds delicious. It's 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 heady. <laughs> Actually, the, the the acid makes it smell a bit like fish and chips. Right, that's strange. Uh, so you basically pour a little shot of that onto the onto the plate. Mm-hmm. And we keep it rocking around there. We try and keep as much of it on the surface as possible. And what will happen then is a, a, a negative image will appear over about 15 to 30 seconds. And then we'll rinse that off with water. And then we will have a light safe negative image on the plate. Excellent. Okay, so here's the plate in negative. This final stage was, for want of a better word, a haunting experience. Seeing that negative slowly reveal its final image was really an amazing thing. Wow, I mean, really 
amazing job. Look at that. <laughs> Incredible. So this process is only sensitive to the blue and UV part of the spectrum. It does pick up other colours as well, but only to a smaller extent. So reds taken with this shot will literally turn out black. And what that does is it does give these images a slightly ethereal quality. Um, and it sees in a, different, in a slightly different way to we do. The, the UV that it picks up is in, obviously invisible to us. Um, and that, yeah, that's, that's why it's slightly magic and has that slightly otherworldly look to it as well. Mm. And you can see with this image here as well how narrow the depth of field is. And the shirt collar is completely out your uh, right shoulders completely out but the eyes nose and mouth are all perfect we then took another tin type and guy gave me the motivation of looking as if i'd just been caught red-handed for a crime so be warned i do look pretty creepy i didn't catch this on camera but guy said to me that he knew that this was going to be a really fantastic photo before developing the negative and i suppose this is just him having lots of experience doing this but i had to ask so how, how is it, how do you know that it's going to be a good one, is it... I can, well, you can sort of see the, neg the negative image that the, the lighting is, it's quite Rembrandt-y. So it's going to have a quite yeah. dark shadow on the one side of your face. I kind the of kind left of, it like that to leave it more, get it more moody. The kind of triangle, yeah. the spot of light on the one side. Yeah. God, you can see the, the flash in the eye, you can see the... Uh, the highlight, yeah. Yeah, what will Catch be light. Into it. Yeah. <laughs> It comes through. And can you believe it? Guy was right. What a striking photo. There we go. Caught red handed. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I look pretty angry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the marks around the edge of the frame, what's what's going on? Okay. So there's different there's several different things going on here. As you saw me coat the plate with collodion, it, it dries very quickly and you have to pour off the excess quite quickly. So where the collodion was really thick, we've got these white lines here and you can see where some of it wasn't quite dry, it's actually come off in the silver bath and we've got this little black bit of edge here. And then at the bottom, we've got some, what's called oystering and that's some of the excess silver nitrate <clears throat> in the plate holder. The dry silver nitrate has actually caused mm. these marks. But what, what I really like about, you know, these little artifacts and inconsistencies, they show that the actual final thing is handmade, it's yes. handcrafted. It's a bespoke product. Yeah. yeah, and it's kind of, it's, you can get completely clean plates, but it's very hard. Okay. But it's... Um, I like it, I prefer it with. Yeah, it gives <laughs> a, you know, it gives a character, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and you can tell it's a wet plate as well. So with these photos, I've, I've been meaning to ask a little bit about like resolution, which I know is not something you can really talk about with analog. But how, how does how does it work? I mean, is presumably they're they're pretty good, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like as uh, I mean, obviously with digital you go it, um, the data stored in pixels, and you can only go so far before you start to see pixelation. Mm -hmm. uh, and with film photography. Um, the crystals are made of silver halides, so fast films will have quite large crystals. So again, as you zoom in, you can see you can see the crystal structure of the images. But with wet plate, which is quite unique, is that it actually resolves to the molecular level. So you can just keep zooming in, and it's <laughs> the detail is it as long as the shot is sharp, the detail is incredible. That's the key, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> So the actual, the actual surface, the actual image, is made from pure, real silver. Mm. Um, and the, you know, another advantage of that is that it's, a, it will, it's archival, so it will last, once it's sealed in against the, uh, against the air, it will last for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. you know, we, have, we have wet plates from tin types from the 1850s and that look as good today as they were when they were shot mm. so long ago. So we have this contraption. <laughs> yeah. 
so yeah, this is a copy stand. Uh, you traditionally use this to take photos of books and flat print media um, for production. So what I do is I, I put my tin types down on the bed here and it's illuminated a couple of little battery powered lamps. Uh, and then I use my Sony A7R2 um, with a 60mm macro lens uh, to photograph the images. And obviously I focus at f2.8 and then adjust the focus and clock it down to about f11 to make sure I get the sharpest possible reproduction. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once the image is scanned like that, uh, I, va I varnish the plates using a traditional shellac varnish, which is a mixture of shellac flake and alcohol and a touch of lavender oil, which gives it a little bit of flexibility. So it was actually shot last week. Wow. You can see the glossy finish. Beautiful. And that should be good for a few generations. Well, great. Thanks so much for going through this you know, incredible process with me. And um, obviously I'm going to link all your details below for people, but where can they, where can people find your work on, online? Uh, well, so I'm Guy Bellingham Photography, uh, .co .uk, and I'm also on Instagram and Facebook as well. Excellent. All linked in the description below. So these were the three tin types that we ended up with, all completely different and unique. You saw the first one, this is just a straight portrait. You can see it's got a really lovely softness to it and this was actually Guy's favourite. This was the last one we did and it's probably my second favourite and it's definitely the sharpest photo of the lot. Guy's motivation for me was to look as if I had a cheeky secret. And then by far my favourite was this one. Yes, it's super creepy but I just love how gritty it is. So there we have it, these three moments frozen in time. What a cool thing to do. I'm so happy that there are still people out there that are so passionate about these traditional styles of photography. So there you go. I don't care what area of photography or videography you're into, that was fascinating to see and I'm so happy with how they turned out. As I mentioned, all of Guy's links I popped in the description box below, but bear in mind, he's a busy guy. He's actually just been featured in an article by the BBC, so he's in demand big time. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope you found this video as interesting as I did. I've got a large archive of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube has handpicked this video for you, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Thank you.